It's another week, which means it's time for another episode of the Integrateness Podcast with Jason and Jolene coming at you, not live, recorded in advance, about a month to two months out from when you're listening to it, but that doesn't matter. I'm Jason. <laughs> I'm Jolene. <laughs> How are you this week, Jolene? Oh, I'm good. I never asked you that. Oh. Almost, we never, ever, rarely I guess ever not. do that. We don't do a check-in that way. Yeah, because I think for the most part, we are satisfied and content with where we're at. And unless stated otherwise, we will just assume that position. We do, which we talked a lot about that last week. We, we did. Oh, did we ever. Which is where we came. actually came up with the idea for this week's episode. Character. Character. Yeah. And what is that? Because people hear about that person's a character. Mm-hmm. Or boy, do they ever have, does, does she have character? Yeah. But what does that mean? Yeah. And do we have it? Well, according to the dictionary, uh, character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. It's also a person in a novel, play, or movie. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. But we're Valid. Gonna, we're going to go with the first one. A mental and moral, the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Running away was not keeping in with her character is the Ooh. example given. So this is something that, oh, I'm going to start this one with a bang. Bang! So, <laughs> I hope you guys think this is like we're as funny as we think we are. Because we think right? we're fucking hilarious. Yeah, we do, we right? Do, we do. We got our own uh, clap track. We <laughs> you do. You my clap track there. Bang! Yeah, bang. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, I was working with some individuals. And this is often something that comes up. It's been highlighted a lot in couples uh, scenarios. So, I'll often work with an individual and then they'll talk to me about their partnership and where they're unhappy there and they've been doing their individual work. But now it's about like sometimes we can only grow so much and if our partner isn't, how do we how do we help them activate their process so that we can grow in the relationship together otherwise if we're not growing together we're likely growing apart right yes. so in the partnerships where they're wanting to you know preserve their relationship and get their partner involved in stuff they'll they'll often like say like will you meet with my partner or can you do some couples work and i and i'm not opposed to that right um so in some of these scenarios you know there have been things that have happened and there's a big like back and forth and each person kind of has their perception of things but like There was this one example where I really just said to the individuals, first of all, you know, there was something that had happened and I looked at her and the two of them, they were on my screen and I pointed to them, right? And I said, you, you have been working with me long enough to have higher standards than this. And I said, you need to hold yourself and your self-worth to a higher standard to not tolerate that kind of bullshit in a relationship. Nice. So you need to check how committed you are to your journey because this is actually going outside of the lines of everything you've spent two years healing. So I'm going to call you out on that a little bit lovingly. And I have a great rapport. Okay. So I'm not scared to have those conversations. And then for him, I said, here's the deal, man. This is not an issue of you being a better partner. It's not be. it's not an issue of you being a better dad, a better employee. I said, this is you as a man, as a human being. This is literally coming down to the fact of in that moment, you were not your best self, nor were you even likely proud of the person you were in that moment. And you can't show up as a partner, a worker, a father figure, whatever that be, unless you get your shit together and find out what your commitment to yourself as being your best version of yourself is. Because you can't tell me that what happened there was your best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And he agreed with me there. And I laid the heavy and I said, this comes down to a character issue. Because there are two decisions you can have. You can sit here and defend the actions or you can sit here and look at your partner and go, holy fuck, that is not how I want to show up as the man in this household. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to show up better for myself and for the people I love. And that becomes a character piece. And because I've seen that in real life, my partner has the, he acts out of integrity in every area of his life. And that is something very new to me to experience in some ways. And there is a lot of pain and wounds in our society and in, you know, some younger generations where we got a little softer. And it's very interesting when we talk about, you know, differing gender roles and where things started to flip, because I do think it screwed us on some morals and Mm -hmm. values that could have been abused later or earlier on in life, but are actually like character defining pieces that help keep us in the lines when we can't keep ourselves in the lines. And no matter what, if we have good, solid moral character, 
And if we, we will be able to act out of integrity. Yep. And I think somewhere too, as society has, and we've danced around these subjects before, as society sort of shifted and changed, there's been almost this celebration of poor moral choices, yeah. right? And of anti-intellectualism. Mm. Whereas when we celebrated smart people who were successful in the right kind of way, mm -hmm. I think it set a better example for other generations to follow. And I, I like... Like I know there's a big thing about not, and we're going to talk about this a bit too in the future episodes, but there, there used to be sort of traditional gender roles. Not all of them were good, mm -hmm. but the, the good portions of that should still be celebrated and followed mm -hmm. for both genders. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sort of helped. Like I was in, my father who raised me, not my he's not my bi biological father, but my adoptive father, was a great role model mm -hmm. to follow. And even though he's been dead for... 30 some odd years I still look back on the way he conducted himself and I try to conduct myself the same mm -hmm. way some people would say some of the behavior is toxic by today's standards but it's yeah. not it's being you know a solid human being who provides for his family first sets sometimes parts of himself aside for the benefit of other people but always tries to do the right thing by for everybody yeah. and is honest and loyal you know what I mean these things I don't think are celebrated anymore yeah, and, and I guess, like, when we look at that, it's like, well, how does character develop? And, like, am I flawed if my character isn't fully developed? And it's just like the plot, right? Just like a character in a plot or yep. a movie or whatever, right? We develop that. They get developed through life experiences and through other characters in the story. They start to define themselves along that journey. So we are always in a state of creating our character. And just because our character is maybe not its best self doesn't mean that it has to stay like that. Like, I think it can become a fluid thing. But I do think that there is a core piece of, like, discipline and values and morals and respect societally taught, mm -hmm. um, culturally taught, relationally taught, internally learned. Like, it's a combination of so many things. And I don't know... I don't know what the answer is in terms of like what differs for people because there's people that come from really horrific backgrounds who have impeccable character yeah, and really inspiring components of their character, right? And then there's some who come from incredibly privileged scenarios that are fucking shit people. Yep. It's, and there's no better way to put it. They're just yeah. pieces of shit people. And so I, where did that come from? I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> That's a line from a... It is Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You eat, you eat pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's I got awesome. distracted. Yeah. Um, that is a part of my character, guys. That I have that. this very immature side of me that is like ridiculous and it could be offensive to some. It's never really ill-intended. but No, it's just, it's just there, <laughs> right? Which is great. It's part of what makes you who you are. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, 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 it, that's a really good question, is how people from the best environments can grow up. But maybe that's part of the problem. The environment's yeah. almost, they've been handed everything. And yeah. so, like we were talking about last week, they just don't know any different. Yeah. And so they become entitled, and they just think that they can steamroll everybody. But then there's also people who come from really great backgrounds that are really great people. Yes. Like, so I guess, like, I'm curious. I don't really know what there is for even research out there. But it's like, yeah, what defines our character? What defines us as, 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 as like, good character, like you know, malicious character, whatever that be. And we watch characters like evolve in storylines all, all the time, time right? right? And it's usually through tragedy. It's usually through darkness. Adversity. It's adversity, which is what Jason and I have been really honest about in the podcast this whole way of like the things that have defined us mm -hmm. and like who we are today, right? So, you know, if you were, if you guys were to like look at your character, and I mean, I tell people to do this in my workshop all the time. Like if you were... A character in a book, what are the defining features? What is the title of that book? Who are you attracting with that title? Mm -hmm. Is that somebody who wants to identify with the victim? Are you wanting to inspire people? What kind of people are you drawing in with the title of that book or that movie or whatever, right? But like, who is your character? And do they always have to stay the same character as who you were in your family? So I've, you know, I always talk about how I was like the shy one. My mom was like, oh, you were such a good baby. So then when I decided to speak up in my later teens, I was like, the the shit disturber, shit disturber right disturber. Yeah, yeah yeah whereas my sister was a little colicky and then particular about things so then she was bossy and it's like how much do we carry those character definitions that other people have given us in a setting well yeah i think a lot of how you are talked to 
and treated at an early age will define that for a very long yeah. time. And then as you grow up and go through hardships and struggles and stuff, I think those are like, as in any movie, well, I'll use that as a good example, like your hero's journey happens. Yeah. And so you must overcome things and stuff. And I think at a certain point, because I, I believe we're also born with a certain personality type and soul I, that can totally be like stomped on by the wrong kind of parent. Yeah. But I think something then happens that triggers that part of you to come forward and become kind of who you really are. Yeah. And I started jumping up and down there, <laughs> guys. Like clapping I was too, like, like clapping <laughs> and jumping up and down because I was like, this is where that blueprint of our life that we talked about with Brittany in astrology, yes. there are core components of like who we come into this world as that are not socialized. No, it's who you are. Yeah. And you know, if anyone started to dive into astrology in that deeper sense, like beyond your sun sign, you know, like she started to point out things about, um, patterns and characteristics and even where things were placed. I think it was our Mercury, Jason. And yeah. because of where they were placed, you and I can ping pong things back and yeah. forth, right? Those become components of our character and that will ping pong really great with us and fucking hit someone else in the head and knock them out. Exactly. <laughs> if they're not matched properly. So our character is also defined by the stars above us, you guys. <laughs> and as she said, uh -huh. there are key moments in your life that yes. change and define things. And yeah. that's where your true character starts to come out and mix with the character of the environment that you were raised in and your life experiences. Yeah. Right? So I think it's a very complex, it's one part, we talked about last week, nature, nurture, that develops your end character. Yeah, and it really makes me think about the episode we did on preventative health. And you were talking about how Chris Hemsworth was doing that, um, what is it, Limitless? Yeah, the show and Limitless. He, yeah, so when we're able to like look at our body today, who we are, what it's all come to, what we've done, but then also go... Ooh, what does my DNA say about me and yeah. what can it predict? That's what we're doing from a character level and life life path level when we're looking at the stars. Okay, yeah. what do the stars say in terms of what's strongly influencing my existence here in this lifetime? Yes. Yeah. Which is cool. It's totally cool. Maybe we're just like going to be leading edge biopsychosocial <laughs> hackers. Wouldn't that Spiritual be awesome? hackers. Yeah. Yeah. We're on to something, you guys. So think about your character. Think about people who you admire their character. Think about people who you think have shit character. And what is it that helps you define that? Usually it's by the things we do. It's yeah. not by the shit we say. No. It's by what we do. Words are one thing. Words are yeah. one thing. It's like the actions that you take. I think for me, it's how people treat other people. Mm. Not even myself. Yeah. But because some people I know that I've been friends with for decades, they treat me really well, but I look how they treat other people and I don't like it. Mm. Right. Yep. I've been starting to question a lot of these long term friendships I've had because of the way that they've treated other people. Like, right. and what does that say about them? And then why are they treating me differently? Yeah. Well, because you're a big deal. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> Scotch, 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 scotchy, scotch, scotch. scotch, scotch. scotch. <laughs> Here it goes down, <laughs> down into my belly. <laughs> Ron Burgundy, for those of you who don't know. Um, yeah, so I really want you to kind of think about some of these pieces, okay? When it comes to character, I can think about moments and expressions of my character that were not my proudest. And mm -hmm. this is when I was in times when I was living with more resentment. I was unable to experience even satisfaction, like not just happiness, but not even satisfaction and contentment in my life. Those were when the dark sides of my character came out. And it's interesting because Brittany would talk about that in astrology is the, the, the high road and mm -hmm. the low road. When you're on the low road of your sign, it's those, it's those Habits and traits that come out um, when you are not behaving your best. Yes. Not in your best place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. You're, you're wounded in those ways, right? But it's about like, okay, recognizing these are things my character is capable of. Are they actually acting them out or are they doing their best to choose different? And I think that, you know, I'm definitely on that part of my journey now where I do less of my poor choices and more of my best expression of my character and choices Often because I am in a place of more satisfaction, more contentment, less resentment, and alignment. Like, I'm simply in alignment in so many areas of my yeah. life, right? I think alignment plays a big part oh, for all of us. Go back and listen to that episode, you guys. That was a good one. Yeah. Season one? Was that one season or two? One. Season, season one? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was the end of season one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We're, we have so many that we are throwing at you guys these days. We've lost track yeah. ourselves. Yeah. 
which is kind of nice. It's actually. Yeah. really exciting, actually. It is. It is. We could talk about things forever. Yeah. <laughs> and we will, probably. Yeah, right? So, yeah, I think character. And I think there's only so much that can be said about it. Like, that's really what we comes down to it. it it's So, look at the parts in your life where you've acted where you feel within character mm-hmm. and where you've acted outside of character. And then ask yourself, why did you allow yourself to deviate from that character? Was it because, mm-hmm. like what Jolene says, you just... You're not happy. You're not in a good place. Is it because you're trying to push the boundaries maybe a little bit of who you are? Sometimes we do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to take a leap of faith and try something new. That's out. Like I used to, like you, you, Julian, pretty timid and shy and not trying new things. And then I finally decided to say, fuck it. And I traveled to England, the UK by myself right. for a month. Just because I yeah. had enough of where I was at in life and something needed to change. Yeah. And that was the best thing I could have done. That's so cool. Right? And like you could even take this a step further. Like if this feels really abstract to you, I always tell people like take it outside of you. Because sometimes we have, a, we talked about perception last week. Sometimes we have such a limited or just like blinded perception of ourselves. So think about, I'm actually thinking when I see the word character here on the screen, I'm thinking of like Friends. Mm-hmm. Friends episode. So many varieties of characters on that show. Which characters annoy you? Which characters are you fond of? And which characters do you identify with? Mm -hmm. This can be the same as movies and things like that. And you know, it's interesting because Jason, you reference a lot of famous people who have like memoirs and stuff. And I know I've talked about Matthew McConaughey who used to just play rom-com characters and wanted to define himself differently than that. He was more than just the rom-com guy. You talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger in, you know, a couple weeks back episode and looking at yeah what we admired about him as a character in movies but then it was like in real life there were a lot of similarities too yeah, right like, yeah. and then like and i also wonder too like how much when you're this is the fake it till you make it and i just got really excited <laughs> i started again i started jumping again cuz i will tell people sometimes like you we are always in the process of creation and if we can like rewire our brain and we have neuroplasticity of the brain to do new things and people can walk after they're paralyzed and all this shit right we can also rewire so many pieces of our expression our character ourselves our responses right and this is where you can um you can fine tune some of these things just based on Baking who you want to be in yeah. a sense. Like, and I don't know how to say that without being superficial, but when you are an actor, okay, mm-hmm. you are playing the role of someone. And a lot of actors will say like, I don't come out of character when I'm on break. I yeah. stay in character the entire time on set. So I interact with the makeup crew a certain way. I interact. Some will stay in character and not break it. They it's won't even. method acting. It, okay, there we yeah. go. So they won't even go home to their family sometimes, right? And I wonder if some of these actors actually acquired um, um, traits from these movie characters simply because they played them and they acquired them and they fit and they admired them and they worked for them. Because when we believe we are, like this is why meditation and visualization is so important, your brain doesn't know any different than what you tell it. So if I visualize that I'm on a beach and I can smell and I can do all this, my body's going to truly believe and perceive that I'm there. So if we're faking these versions of ourselves to rewrite parts that weren't our best expression, Mm -hmm. I think we can fake it till we make it in those ways. I think so too. Actually, there's a tragic story about that with Heath Ledger, the actor oh, Heath Ledger, yeah. who played the Joker. He killed himself after playing the Joker because right. he spent so long in his head. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which is sad. But that's, again, you're talking about how powerful that can yeah. be to do that, right? So you yeah. got to be, care- so I be can't careful watch that movie. when you're doing it. And I love the movie. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't you know? make it past the part where he was bullied in the beginning. And his his difference yep. was just horrifically bullied. And there was this innocence ripped out of him. And then probably knowing of his death, I couldn't do it. I yeah. couldn't I couldn't listen to it. But I also, I think too, because of the intuitive medium stuff that mm-hmm. I do as well, I feel a lot of that. I remember that happened when I heard one of Avicii's songs and I went on this deep dive of his life and I was like, I was almost kind of consumed by it for mm-hmm. a little bit and felt the depths of some of his stuff. Like the minute I heard this one song and was like, what? And then I ended up watching. Yeah, it was wild. Mm-hmm. But I felt that when I started watching The Joker and I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. And I tried three times because I know it's a good movie. Oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Wild. But again, that's there's how powerful your mind can be. So if, if you're trying to fake it till you make it, 
be very picky on what you're trying to fake do to it. make, right? Yeah. Like, do it with the right intention. Yeah, I have a quote in my workshop, and it's a Lady Gaga quote. And um, and I really love the idea of it because it was something like, um, I want people to walk down the street like they're already a superstar success yeah. and believe the shit out of it every day until they are. Or well, something like that. Did, right? Yeah. Schwarzenegger did, would visualize being Mr. Universe. Yeah. And that's, and he'd, he'd be talked about in his book, he's at the gym working out five hours a day and he's smiling and everyone else is there working out five hours and they're like, why are you smiling, Arnold? And he's like, because I know where I'm going. Yeah. Right? And that would drive him. Yeah. And that then, you know, rolls into discipline. It rolls yep. into self-belief. It rolls into alignment. Like so many of these things that are all interlocking pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. And watching people, you know, I think... I think what we love about celebrities nowadays is they're sharing so much more of their yep. personal lives because they have a they have a forum for it. They didn't before. They had their movies and they had interviews and that was, that it. was it. Yeah. Now they have their own social media platforms where they can express who they are. So when you watch um, these stars evolve, like The Rock, like Dwayne Johnson, mm -hmm. um, when you watch, you know, Matthew McConaughey or like Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. I really like watching what she what her big movements are and stuff, I appreciate her so much more as a human being, yeah. not just an actress, because they also just get painted in whatever we view from their character roles too in some for ways, sure. right? For sure. Like that's why I think why I think watching for that show Limitless with Chris yeah. Hemsworth, you get a lot of seeing what he's like as a person. Yeah. <laughs> Which you should watch that show, Jolene. Yeah, you would really I appreciate should. it. I should. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> um, I guess that's our talk on character. Yeah. And we might actually revisit the subject because it's yeah. important we could go on and on about. Yeah, and it overlaps through a lot of things. And I think, you know, when you first meet somebody, that's really what we're referencing. How do I feel around this person? Do they have a warm sense of presence? Mm -hmm. Like how, what, what, what do I notice about them? We typically are picking up on character. Yeah. We will see... And we will see an outfit, we will see a role, we will see a uniform, we will see behavior initially, but we're looking at the depths of character and it is a combination of all the things we say, see, and do, right? Exactly. And we we project that even if we don't know we're projecting it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the person that comes in and you're just like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have anything to do with that person. Totally. And then you, you can peel away a little piece of this. I know some people I've had that with. And then, like, underneath those protective mechanisms, yep. they're actually lovely individuals. And what's underneath all of that is just this, like, brilliant character, essentially. Yeah. But they're that they're protecting is, or Yeah, fighting. which is also the Joker kind of yep. thing, too, right? Yeah. So think about that. Jason and I hope that we do a good job of demonstrating what our character is here on the show. Mm -hmm. We're fairly transparent. We are honest and open and candid about our journeys. We are also intellects and empaths and we're driven and we have a general interest in the well-being of all of you and the collective. And we believe that we make a small difference in enhancing that. Exactly. Yeah. And have you noticed if our characters have changed oh. over the year and a half of doing this, or almost two years? People have said that. They've yeah. followed me through my social media platform, and they have watched me evolve through all of that, too. And that's why I love um, saying that about my workshop in terms of, like, you get a different version of me every time you take this. Exactly. And I have people that take it three, four times for a different version of themselves, too. Awesome. Yeah, so every season, you guys get a different version of us. There you go. And next week, when we come back to you with our next favorite episode, you'll probably see a different version of us then. Boom. Boom. So until then, I'm Jason. I'm Jolene. Talk again soon. Mm -hmm.